Once we have the bottom cross on a regular 3x3, we just put in the corners, just like this one. Luckily, on the extended cube, this step remains exactly the same. So we can just do this normally, like that, like that. Whatever method you want to use for this, it works perfectly. Now, if you know F2L, you can do F2L on this. It will work. It's just a little bit confusing with the extended pieces, so I'm just going to do layer by layer. Now, this one's already in the proper place. So let's look for the next corner that we can use. Let's see if there's one on the top layer, and there is. We have the blue, orange, and white. So let's look for the blue and orange face, which is right here, blue, orange. And again, I'm using basic methods from the 3x3 to get it down there. If you're not comfortable with this, you need to refresh your 3x3 technique. So here we go. We got green and red, green and red, just like that. And the last one is white, or sorry, green and orange, and white, of course. So there we go. You'll notice that our white face, which is the one that's spun right now, matches this face. Perfect. We just finished our bottom layer. The next thing we need to do is the middle layer, which in this case, we can do it just like the layer by layer method, or we can use F2L to finish it off. Now you can do F2L from the beginning, like I said earlier, but it's a little tricky to do, especially when you have those extended pieces. So I would recommend, at least for a beginner, to start by doing the layer by layer method in order to get the F2L. So there we go, first two layers done on the 3x3. Three three. We're gonna use those exact same methods here on this thing. Now remember, when you're solving the extended cube, you have to ignore these side pieces when dealing with edges. This is an edge. You only focus on these colors, not the side colors. Those are bad, these are good. So this is the red and blue. So let's look for red and blue. It's over here. Now, I guess you can use those side colors as kind of a reference, but in reality, they kind of just make it harder to see and they mess up your recognition sometimes. So I'd only focus on these parts. Even though they can be useful to use, I still wouldn't recommend using them. So now we have blue, orange, and I'm just using the layer by layer method right here. This is old school stuff. For those of you that don't know PLL, or F2L rather. actually had a corner that was out of place. Okay, so here we go. Layer by layer. Putting it in just like normal. Now I know these sides are extended and they're big chunky and it's kind of hard to see it, but try to picture what it would look like on a three by three when solving this right here. So I'm gonna go to this green and orange. And I'm gonna do this one slow. I want you to imagine this piece coming down here. like that. Now we only have one more, which is the green and red, which is right here. So I'll do a little bit faster. And that's your layer by layer to get F2O. Just like that. Now you'll see all that white, all that orange, all that blue, all that red, all that green. That's your F2O. Everything but this top layer has been solved just like we did on our 3x3. So now that we're done with that, we need to go on to getting the cross on the top layer. Now again, if you have the T, do the algorithm for the T to get the cross. If you have the L, do that one. If you have the dot, do two of whatever one you, that you want, and then you'll get the uh, cross on top. Again, basic 3x3 three three stuff. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you don't know your 3x3 three three well enough. You need to review your 3x3. Three three. So we're going to do that same thing up here. In this situation, we have the L. Again, we're gonna ignore these side pieces and just look at the edges from the top. So you'll see that we have this yellow and this yellow, and these two are not yellow, so this is the L. So I'm gonna do the algorithm for the L. There we go. Bam, just like that. Now we have our cross on top. Now it looks all from there, but from there it does not, obviously. So what we got to do now 
is we actually got lucky and we oriented our um, corners. If we didn't orient our corners, all that all we would have to do is do a simple algorithm in order to orient them, just like that. For those, also look up the um, how to solve Rubik's Cube in under one minute. All those t uh, algorithms are in that video as well. Um, so now that we have all of our uh, pieces oriented correctly, we're going to start permuting them. What we're going to look for, just like when we look for in a 3x3, three three, is a pair in the back using the method that I show in my video. There's tons of ways to do this. If you know F2L and PLL, all that kind of stuff, then you should be able to do this on your own. But if you don't, I'm guessing it's because you're not very comfortable with the last layer stuff. So we find a pair in the back and we do the algorithm. That gets us four sets of pairs, just like that. So we're gonna do the same thing here. Looking around, looking around. Oh look, we got a pair of orange. I know it's kind of confusing to see, but if I line it up, you might be able to see it better. You see that? You see how those two are both orange? Those aren't a pair because that's blue and red. These aren't a pair because that's blue and green. And these aren't a pair because it's green and red. But these, that's a pair because they're both orange. So we're putting those in the back. We're doing the algorithm. And now you'll notice when we line up the corners, we have red, red, green, green, orange and orange, and blue and blue, just like we have it over here. So the next thing we're gonna do from that is we're gonna do one of the four algorithms from the uh, four look last layer, which again is in the video, how to solve Rubik's Cube in under one minute. So in this case, we have just a clockwise, actually counterclockwise algorithm. So now that we solved the last step on the three by three, let's go over here and do the same thing here. So we have all of these pairs. So we got blue and blue, orange and orange, green and green, red and red. Now we just need to orient the edges. In this case, I got the H perm. I need to take this orange, flip it over here, the red's over here, the blue's over here, and the green's over here. It's kind of like you're doing a cross through the middle. Uh, it's also called the H perm. So I'm gonna do the H perm right now. And there we go, I solved it. Now, depending on what algorithm you have on the last step, again, if you don't know the last step, you need to look up that video so you get a better understanding of four look or two look last layer. Once you finish all of that, you're probably going to have one of two scenarios. You're gonna have a scenario where one, one center is gonna be misoriented by 180 degrees or you're going to have two centers that are misoriented by 90 degrees. If you have two like this that are misoriented by 180 degrees, you're just gonna repeat for each one. Um, so the first one, since it's easy, you're going to do this algorithm um, five times. It's for 180 degree rotation. So you notice this blue needs to whip around over here. This green needs to whip around. Red and orange need to flip also. So this is really easy. It's R, U, R prime, U. You can just do that five times. So that was one, that was two, that was three, that was four, and that was five. And you'll notice it flipped it. I'm gonna do it again real slow. R, U, R prime, U. That's one, R, U, R prime, U. That's two, R, U, R prime, U. That's three, R, U, R prime u, that's four, and one more, R u, R prime u, that's five.